well, this is a horrible idea, and I haven't even started yet. What are we trying to do today? Well, we're gonna try to do something with this tailgate, so let's take a look at uh, the situation as it presents itself. So this is off a uh, 1948 GMC, and uh, unless you're Ray Charles, you uh, probably noticed that it has some uh, damage. Uh, yeah, it's it's not uh, it's not very good at all. Uh, lots of old repairs. See where it's been welded together after it broke apart at some point in the past. There's some really harsh stuff going on here all throughout there. And uh, this is this is something we also discovered, is the, the bottom has kind of gone away on us in quite a dramatic fashion. So that's not very good. Now believe it or not, being dished in like this isn't a uh, factory design feature. That is actually supposed to be straight. And as you can see, it is not. Similar issues on the bottom. Not that it matters because it's rusted out anyways, but uh, you know. Uh, what is our plan here? Our plan is to make this into a usable tailgate. It is too far gone and these tailgates are readily available. I'm not getting too carried away with the repairs on this. It's gonna be very rough. So I'm just gonna do whatever I have to do to get it to where it'll go back on the truck again and actually function as a tailgate. And uh, those of you with uh, oddball trucks like Mercury's or Fargo's or uh, Studebaker's or uh, what have you, um, where tailgates aren't available new, well, maybe there will be some tips here or something, or at least uh, those of you who are considering repairing your tailgate uh, will watch this and realize that uh, you're better off just getting a, a new one or finding a better one. But either way, I'm going to struggle through this and see, see what I can do with this. And uh, like I said, it's going to be... It's going to be pretty rough still, but anything uh, we do is going to be better than the way it is right now. So before I do anything else, what I want to do is clean up the surface so I know what I've got to work with. And for that, I like to use my California car duster. It's great for cleaning all of your scrap metal before it gets hauled away because it will not scratch the surface. And the dirtier it is, the better it works. I separated this top outer section here and as you can see it's it's in uh, not very good condition so let's uh, just try hammering on it and see if we can get it a little bit better 
not expecting any miracles here, but uh, you never know.
Well, there's been a wonderful development here. As you can recall, this bottom piece that we cut off is in uh, not very good shape. It's bent in and obviously the bottom is missing. So, so I uh, started thinking with my brain for a second and I remembered that I have this uh, old front panel here and the bottom of it is toasted. But this part is good. And this part up here at the top is the same as uh, this is on the tailgate. So we're just going to uh, slice it off here and weld this onto the bottom of the tailgate and uh, that'll uh, pass off just fine. I'm doing a few more of these micro shrinks or whatever you want to call them here. We've got a couple of dents going this way and the metal is stretched slightly but uh, it's not stretched a whole lot because there's just a single impact there. So um, if you look here though you can see that it's definitely high and we started working on this one and we got it better still needs a little more work but we're going to uh, just demonstrate here or here and see if we can get this a little bit lower see the way that it is now it's uh, rocking quite a bit so I'm just gonna do a few zaps through here uh, quench it and then we'll see if that brings it down at all which uh, I hope it will So you can see all we've really done here is just made a bunch of very, very, very tiny little dots on this panel. We haven't actually, you know, gotten right in there and, and made the metal dramatically change color, but it did just these little blue areas, these little heat effect zones here. That's enough to, to, to move it around. And anytime metal heats up enough to where it changes color, you're changing this, the state of that metal 
and uh, therefore causing it to contract a very small amount. And in this case, all we needed was for the metal to contract a very small amount. We didn't need a, a big dramatic uh, a shrink there. So if you remember, when I was using this straight edge before, uh, this was actually taller than this, and the straight edge was actually too long here, so I'll just... So if we, if we use this straight edge and we run it across here now, we can see that we are completely flat now, all through here. So like you saw, a very, very minimal effort there. Um, just, you know, on the trigger for a fraction of a second, and then uh, just doing a couple uh, passes just across the uh, where the high spot was, and then quenching it with the air, and then uh, a little bit of hammer and dolly work just to help displace the metal. And that's uh, that's all it took. There's no, uh, no oil cans or anything. It's it's been returned to its uh, state. And if this was like a crown panel and you had these tiny little dents, uh, you can usually work it out reasonably flat again because the crown panel there's there's shape in it, and you can kind of that small amount of stretch you can kind of fake it out and rearrange the metal enough where you can hide it. But in this case, uh, this is totally flat here. It was. It was just a flat piece of metal. The only, the only shape it has is where it was stamped for the uh, the GMC letters, but throughout here it's supposed to be flat. So just those, whatever, something sliding ahead or back in the bed, causing those tiny little dents, that's enough to uh, raise that panel up. It was almost raised up, you know, an eighth inch or so, and just doing tiny little shrinks in those, uh, those dents there brought it all back down. So that's... Uh, that's how that works, and uh, I've had pretty good luck with that actually. So, you know, something to try or not try or whatever. Works for me. The way I was taught to shrink metal is to obviously use an oxyacetylene torch. And what you do is you heat up about a dime sized area on the panel on the highest point of your stretch. You heat that up with a torch, and you'll see the metal gather and raise up. And then when it's high, you take your dolly from behind and your hammer on the top and you hammer around that to force that metal back together. And then once you get it compressed, then you complete the shrink by quenching it with either air or water if you so choose. And that just helps to lock it in place and you know do a little bit more shrink. So that's a very effective way of shrinking and it, it, uh, you can shrink a lot of metal very quickly with that. Problem with that is it is very uh, invasive uh, you're heating that metal up to the point where it's red and obviously that is completely changing the grain structure of that metal and a lot of times when the panel gets stretched during damage uh, the actual stretch uh, isn't as uh, significant as one might think um, if you look at the way that a panel is built at the factory or stamped at the factory they have these great big massive presses that come down and squash that panel and the amount of force that goes into actually compressing that panel and deforming that metal to the point where it takes a new shape is just it's an incredible amount of force so uh, if you any of you have ever tried you know building a crown panel with just hand tools then you can kind of understand just how much force it actually takes to to stretch a panel to that point so um, just the initial damage from like an impact or something uh, isn't near as uh, severe as the actual forces that go into making that panel. So it's very easy to see a panel and think it's, it's badly stretched, whereas uh, it's actually not stretched as much as you might think. So by going in with the torch and, and shrinking it that way, you can run the risk of over shrinking it and then you end up with the panel and it, and it starts dishing in or dishing out or whatever and you start thinking well it needs more shrinking and I've seen people uh, they go over a whole panel and the whole panel is just like heat shrinks and it wasn't it was just a very minor dent before and they, they just go nuts with the torch and by the time you're done you completely change the, uh, the grain structure of that panel and it's never really you know the same and if you ever look at a panel that's been gas welded or welded of any kind uh, the first place that, that it rusts is where the weld is so that's because again you're changing the grain structure of that metal and it's never going to be exactly the way it was before. So uh, the way I 
kind of develop this other idea here. And again, it, it's not uh, the be all end all. There's no replacement for torch shrinking for a severely uh, stretched panel. Uh, right now, I, I don't have uh, access to an oxyacetylene torch anymore. It's just uh, gotten too expensive to have. I already have argon and my big mix, and it's just too expensive to uh, have even more tanks around here to lease or, or buy or whatever. So uh, if I had a torch, I'd be using it all the time, but um, I kind of figured this other way out uh, when I was working collision. Uh, we had a uh, one of the newfangled dent pullers uh, where you, it welds on little keys. I don't know if you guys ever watched that Arthur Cusick guy. Uh, he fixes like just ruined modern cars. Like uh, people say, you know, there's not really any real bodymen out there anymore doing collision, but that guy, man, the stuff he fixes is insane. Uh, but anyways, he has one of those those dent pullers where it just welds on a bunch of tiny little keys, and then you stick a rod through those keys and you can pull out your damage. And so that uh, that works really well. And I don't remember the, the technical term for it, when you can leave it in the comments or whatever. But anyways, uh, one of the uh, attachments for this was this this thing that looked like a, like a, it was just kind of a narrow rod looking thing. I believe the technical term for it was magical wand of truth and justice. But anyways, it fitted into this thing and I, I didn't know what it was for or, or what it was um, until one day uh, one of my coworkers, he was fixing a, uh, a Jeep Wrangler door. And I don't know if you ever see a Jeep Wrangler, but those doors are like totally flat. Like uh, there's no, there's like one little body line going through them. And other than that, there's no crown whatsoever. So he's fixing this door and it had been uh, wrecked and repaired poorly before and then it had been wrecked again so he's trying to fix it and he called me over to help him shrinking so he had this this wand thing and it's just this weird i don't know what it's made out of but so he told me to just kind of hold this thing here like this and just kind of run it across around where where i want to shrink and so i thought you know you just take this thing and stab it on and, and just uh sit there and, and let it do its thing but he's like no 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 so he showed me and he just took it and just very lightly arced it across where, where he's trying to shrink and it just just like what I was doing with the unispotter there it just leaves those tiny little dots and uh, I thought there there's no way that that's going to do anything and uh, sure enough we went at it and it actually did shrink that panel and and, and uh, tighten up that panel again and we were able to repair it so I thought well that's uh, that's interesting uh, the way that works but uh, I mean, it makes sense on a modern car. Uh, you can't be going at it with a torch um, because you know you're burning off all that e coat. And and modern cars they rust so fast as it is. You you start changing the grain structure of that metal. A lot of it's high strength steel or ultra high strength steel or moron steel or boron steel or or what have you. So you don't want to be you know changing that metal too much or all the uh, the safety people get all upset and the vehicle rusts out and faster than it normally does. So I kind of got to thinking that's where the, the unispotter uh, shrinking tip came in and now I always kind of wrote those things off as being totally useless because uh, the way I understood them to work is you would just just like you were shrinking with a torch you would except you'd hold that unispotter there and just let it sit there and just let it cook into the panel and what always happened is first you have to put force on it to get that that ground going on the unispotter so you're putting force into it and then so you end up usually the panel ends up popping in again so you end up with it indented and then by the time you're also pushing into it with that heat source you end up creating this this crater and it really doesn't shrink anything in fact it ends up stretching it more than anything else and you just end up with a huge mess and so I always, I wrote it off until, um, like I said, a couple of years ago, I was doing collision and we had this, this wand thing and I started thinking, well, what if there's a, a different way to use that unispotter? This may be the right way to use it. I don't really know. Everyone I've seen use it and the way I was supposedly told to use it was just to sit there and let it cook in and let it do its thing. And, you know, it was, it was useless that way. So then I was like, well, you know, if this, if this wand will just arc across the panel, then why can't I, I use that use spotter in a similar manner? So that's that's where that came in. So I just, like I guess I, I call them micro shrinks, but I don't know what, you know, it don't matter. Uh, either way, I just get that 
just little tiny dots of heat and then I quench it and then I just hammer and dolly it a little bit here and there just to kind of help displace the metal but uh, it actually uh, works quite well on uh, on areas that are stretched and even those you know a lot of times you've seen me fix stuff where somebody's fixed it with a ball peen hammer or whatever and they all all those little hammer hits and everything I, I use that a lot for uh, for correcting that as well so it's just uh, another way of doing it and the other thing is uh, you sound across it with with 80 or whatever and all those little dots or whatever they completely disappear whereas when you heat stuff up with a torch and shrink it and whatever there's usually you know kind of a, a ghost or whatever of, uh, of, of shrinks past so uh, you kind of it you know I'm, again I'm not saying it's, it's better than the torch but it's been working for for me so hopefully that you know makes a little bit more sense and uh, it's something I've been playing around with here for a couple of years now and uh, having very good success with it and something that I never would have thought would actually work but it it seems to I mean you saw what we did with the tailgate here so uh, whatever uh, you can try it or not don't matter to me but I get asked about these things almost every video these are shrinking discs as you can see I do have one but it's not being used and there's a few reasons for that. Uh, I have messed around with it over the years and I was never too impressed with it. Uh, some of that is on me uh, because I was probably using it wrong. Um, some of the things that I recently discovered I was doing wrong is you need to lubricate the panel surface using a uh, big permanent marker because if you just go metal on metal, what was happening is it would gall up the surface of the metal and I was never really impressed with that. Another thing is I don't think the grinder that I was using uh, had enough RPM to uh, make this thing as effective as it could be. I've heard nothing but good things about these, so, you know, um, it does, it was shrinking, but it, it, it was so tedious that, uh, you know, it, it really wasn't uh, you know what I felt was impressive but again these get such rave reviews that they uh, they must have some that uh, I have to feel like you know a lot of it was on me using it incorrectly so there's that and some of the things I don't like that I don't think are uh, avoidable is you have to quench with water to really make it effective and obviously water on bare metal then you get rust so you're you have to constantly go back every day uh, on your bare metal panel until you get it in primer and you know clean off all that surface rust that accumulates overnight or whatever from getting hosed down with water so there's that I also don't like that it's loud it's very very loud and makes a lot of noise and again um, when I was using it and I was again not using it 100% correctly I found that uh, you know it was making more noise than, than what it was actually you know doing so there's that and then uh, Final thing, which is probably just a personal thing, is uh, I didn't like the fact that there's a uh, spinning steel disc spinning at uh, thousands of RPM on a grinder. You know, if, if anything happens, uh, even though the edge is turned up, you know, if that gets a hold of human flesh, it's, it's going to do some serious damage. So that's, uh, you know, I, I don't like having anything sketchy spinning around at that kind of RPM, whether it's, you know, broken cutoff discs or, or whatever. I try to avoid that. I know I'm not a real safety person and the safety people always lecture me on, on grinder safety and whatever, but, you know, we try to uh, not take too many risks that are, uh, aren't really necessary. So that's my take on that. That being said, I do want to get a better grinder and probably buy another one of these with the proper pad and, and you know the proper permanent marker and whatever so I can actually use it 100% the way it's supposed to and then uh, get an actual uh, you know accurate uh, reading of what it does not a real priority right now but I would like to mess around with this some more because it, it has gotten rave reviews from a lot of people who know way more than I do or ever will know so um, but as of right now it sits in the toolbox collecting dust 
and I just thought I'd cover that because I, again I get asked literally every video about these so that's that's my take on it and like I said the reason that I wasn't too impressed with it is largely because I was probably using it wrong so so I think I could look past a lot of the downfalls of using this um, if it did work better so definitely want to mess around with this some more in the future So the way I'm welding this is I'm doing three stitches at a time, about a half inch uh, weld at a time, and then I'm letting it completely cool to the touch, and then I'm uh, going beside it, doing another three welds or half inch a weld, letting that cool, and then I work my way back and forth and back and forth, further and further apart, we're doing the same thing here, alternating. And what that's doing is it's, uh, when you start out here, you have to wait quite a while. But by the time you start moving out here, by the time you get this well done, it's already cool over here. And then so it starts getting faster and faster the further you get away. Now I know uh, in my previous videos, you've seen me do a technique where I weld a half inch at a time and then grind it, then weld a half inch at a time, grind it and move away just all in one pass. In this case, I don't want to do that because we have this tube at the top here, this rounded boxed in area. And so if I start putting too much heat into that, I'm concerned that it's gonna to wanna to just go back to the bent in the way it was. And even though this tailgate is still rough and we're not trying to make it perfect, uh, what I do want is for this tailgate to be usable so if I put too much heat into this top area here and it bows and, and does weird stuff, I have no way of correcting that and then all of this work that we just did will be for nothing. So uh, my greatest fear other than communism is having this tailgate be unusable. So that's, that's the theory there. I, I think I have talked about this in other videos as well, but just a refresher here, that's what I'm doing. I don't like uh, just doing like a short weld here and a short weld here and here and here and here and here and here and everywhere uh, I just find it's too uh, easy to start putting too much heat into the panel that way and This way it uh, keeps you honest and as you work your way out it gets faster Whereas if you just doing all over randomly on the panel uh, That way usually ends up taking longer towards the end It's it's faster at first, but as you get towards the end it takes a lot longer and you also end up with uh, more chances of having pinholes and uh, and missed spots on your welds. Whereas this, it, it's fairly easy to uh, to to avoid that. So that's that's the theory there. We're we're starting in the middle, going out to here half inch at a time, then going over to here half inch at a time, and we're letting that completely cool to the touch. So the panel is is basically room temperature. If it's warm or anything like that, then we just wait. So it's a game of patience. But like I said, it does get faster the further we go out and because we are doing you know the top and the bottom at the same time we can kind of alternate that and it uh, makes it go fairly quick here so I'm just gonna 
I don't know if I have to film the rest of this, it's going to get pretty uh, lame, so I'll just uh, cut to it when this is fully welded. Well, that was a ridiculous amount of welding, and now we get to do a ridiculous amount of grinding. And I still have to weld this piece on the side here, and probably do a little bit of hammer and dolly on the bottom, and then I think we're going to call it there. We got uh, way too much time into this already, so whatever. Uh, let's uh, start making some noise and knocking some welds down. Well, it's still quite a rough old thing, but I think for uh, what we started out with to where we got now, I think it's a total success story. We were just trying to make a, uh, a usable tailgate that looks like a tailgate, and uh, I think we did that. Uh, what we started out with what was essentially uh, scrap metal, and at least now this could uh, be passed off as a tailgate. Yeah, very rough, and uh, for the price of a new one, it's, it's not worth the time it would take to continue on with this. I've already got uh, too much uh, invested into this uh, as it is, but uh, you get the idea, hopefully. You know, there's a lot of uh, trucks where tailgates aren't available new, so you wouldn't have much choice but to uh, do this type of uh, thing. So maybe that'll give you some ideas or uh, at least uh, discourage you from trying. I don't know, whatever you figure. And there it is. And you know, if you stand like way, way back here and look at it from this angle, it actually uh, looks pretty good. Guy'd almost be uh, tempted to smear on some uh, dent eraser in a can and uh, sand it out and make a driver quality tailgate out of it. But uh, I think by the time you bought that and the sandpaper and the high build primer and all that, not to mention your time, uh, that's already uh, you're already into the cost of a brand new tailgate, but anyways It's on there And even though it's lumpy as all get out uh, if you look at it along the top here, it's not Curled in like that anymore. You know, it kind of passes off as uh, something that looks like something I guess maybe I know this video is going to raise a lot of thought-provoking questions such as uh, why didn't you do it this way or why didn't you do it that way or why didn't you just build a new tailgate and graft in GMC letters wouldn't that be easier or of course the uh, ever popular how long did it take or why didn't you painstakingly metal finish the entire tailgate and the answer to all those questions and more is yes I just want to say thanks to everyone for watching and for following along on this GMC series. This is going to be the last video uh, where we're actually doing work on the truck. The next video is going to be the grand reveal 
and so I don't know when that video is coming out quite yet, but uh, that's uh, that's what's coming up. We've kind of reached the point where, uh, where I'm done with it. So uh, again, thanks to everyone for following along with this project and for watching and liking and sharing and commenting and all that stuff. And of course, all the people doing the super thanks and super chats and our patrons as well for their generosity. So um, without all you people and your support, uh, this truck never would have gotten as far as we got it. So that's uh, fantastic. And in fact, uh, we took it a little bit farther than I had originally intended to take it. So again, that's all thanks to you folks and uh, you supporting me on this uh, journey and this idiot quest. Anyways, the next video I would like to kind of do as a uh, walkthrough of the project from start to finish with clips kind of of each of the steps and uh, so that's going to take me a while to figure out how to edit because I don't typically keep a, a hard copy of, uh, of stuff I've recorded once the, the video gets put out there I, I have to erase all that because it just takes up so much space and I haven't figured out how to adapt a USB thing to whatever and you know technology and stuff so um, I don't know how to do any of that but I have seen other channels where they'll uh, take clips from other people's videos and put them into their videos so I know there's some way to do that because if other people can rip off other people's videos then I should be able to rip off my own and put it into a video and uh, do kind of a, a start to finish of the GMC right from beginning to where we are now and so if, if any of you know how I can somehow do that uh, leave a comment um, and let me know uh, otherwise it's going to take me a bit to figure that out and if I can't figure it out I'll just do kind of a, a short video clip and then a, a picture slideshow and then a video clip at the end and that'll be that but I would really like to do a video where of just the whole, just a sped up thing of the whole process. And uh, those videos usually seem to do fairly well on YouTube, so it'd be nice to kind of end this project off on a high note that way. But uh, also, if you enjoyed this tailgate video, please uh, share it and whatever, because there was really no economic reason for me to fix this tailgate other than make a video for you. So hopefully you enjoy it. But. Anyways, thanks again to all of you, and we'll uh, see you again soon with the completed GMC. So I hope you're looking forward to seeing uh, it completed, just as I am. I guess I've already seen it, but, uh, you know, uh, we got to pretend like uh, it's going to be a surprise.